Hi, I'm Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here at the Haas School with David Andre, who is the founder and CEO of Cerebellum Capital. Uh, welcome, David. Thank you. Nice to be here. So, so David, um, I think we're getting to the point where um, the vast majority of trades uh, in markets, all markets, are automated, driven by algorithms, driven by, by machines and programs. Um, and you, you know, you started this uh, a while back um, before it be became ever pervasive. Um, do you think that this is fundamentally changing the, the nature of, of the markets? And, and do you think that uh, it's getting increasingly difficult to, to spot patterns that you can trade on? Um, what, what's I do. I, yeah. I, think, I think that this has been a very substantial change. Uh, day traders, humans trying to make markets themselves largely been pushed out of out. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some very skilled ones who still pull it off, but they're even there using a lot of technological help. I think we're transitioning from a period where most of the algorithms were pretty straightforward and they mm -hmm. were they were mechanical, but not really using much in the way of machine learning. They weren't adaptive. Mm -hmm. They weren't learning on the fly or detecting patterns. And we're now in an era where almost all the algorithms that are there are in one way or another trained or tuned uh, by data. But isn't, isn't it kind of leading to a new type of, of beauty contest because in, instead of everybody competing to see who can read the fundamental signals uh, better than the others or the, the, the human behavioral signals, everybody's trying to read the signals that are emitted by the other uh, algorithms. Correct, are, and try to take advantage of them. Yeah. There's a bit of an arms race going on at the higher frequency side uh, between the groups that are doing this, both in terms of the technology, the speed of their processing, uh, as well as the quality of their very fast artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, I think where, wh while it is true that most uh, trades are taking place in some kind of an automated fashion, most of the decision making around those trades is still being done by humans. Mm -hmm. you know, it's some big uh, f mutual fund deciding we're going to increase our share of Google because their price just dropped and so they want to get back in. And that Those decisions are primarily today still being done by humans, but I think we're entering an era where more and more machine learning is going to be brought to bear on those kinds of trading level decisions. So as you keep adding more and more complexity to these models, um, you know, you get better fit in many cases, but then you also overfit. How do you evaluate models to I mean, some of the techniques of cross-validation that were used in the past um, are going to probably miss a lot of the overfitting that's happening now. The machine learning has advanced so much in the past decade that it's trivial to overfit, right? And in fact, in a lot of cases for asset management, there simply isn't really enough data to use a lot of these more complicated and interesting methods. Um, where something like deep learning is being used today, for example, in asset management, it's really more about taking unstructured data, say photographs or text, and turning it into structured data. Uh, and because that problem is, has got a lot more data outside of asset management, they can actually mm -hmm. you know, do that and take advantage of it. Uh, inside, the control for overfitting is absolutely critical uh, and requires some sophistication. Uh, there's a lot of people who don't get that right. Now, in a lot of places, uh, there's a challenge of explainable or non-explainable AI and you know if you're a regulated industry it's a, it's a big issue um, but in you know as a hedge fund it's, it's it's less of an issue with the regulators but do you ever run into problems where you have difficulty explaining what it is you're doing to the limited partners and the people that you rely on absolutely one of the biggest challenges in fundraising is conveying what we're doing at a level that investors can get some understanding of such that they can start to trust it uh, and our, when we fail to do that that's when it's hardest to close any kind of sale mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thanks, David. Thanks sure. for coming in.